guys, my name is Dr. Carla Sanford and I'm a beef cattle extension specialist at Montana State University. And today we have... I'm Michaela Ogg and I'm Dr. Sanford's graduate student studying reproductive physiology. So we wanted to talk with you today about the beef life cycle. Does everyone know what these are? Beef products, right? So we have beef jerky and we have beef sticks and they come from cattle. Sometimes we think that we just buy our beef products from the grocery store, but where does it first start? Cow. That's right, all of these cattle in the pastures, very good Riley. So we're gonna talk about the phases of production, the life cycle of beef, okay? So we first start out with where the calf is born. So a cow-calf operation, those are where ranchers raise cows and they have bulls and the cows and the bulls have calves. calves. Very good. So a cow-calf operation has breeding cows and bulls and calves. Does anyone know how much a baby calf weighs at birth? What do you think, Riley? How many pounds? Eight. Okay, Mackenzie, what about you? What do you think? A hundred? A million? A million pounds. Well, I'm sure that mother cow is happy that they don't weigh a million pounds at birth, but that's a very good guess. So Mackenzie, you said a hundred pounds, and so we can have baby calves weigh between 60 and 100 pounds. And so the heifer calves, those are the female calves, they're a little bit lighter than the bull calves, and the bull calves are the male calves, okay? Did you know that there are about 2.5 million cows in the state of Montana? Did you know that? No. That's actually more cattle than we have people that live in our state. So when that baby calf, that young calf will continue to grow and they drink milk that comes from where? That's right, the mother cow lactates, that's right, Riley, and they lactate and they produce milk. And so they drink that milk and they nurse until they become old enough where they can eat the forages, the hay, the grass that we have provided and the feed. And then when it gets old enough where it doesn't need the milk anymore, then we wean the calf. Okay, so we take that calf and it moves on to the next stage of the cycle. Does anyone know why we brand cattle in Montana? We brand our cattle so that we can identify each animal, right? And so we know where it belongs. And if we know that it's some place that it shouldn't be, we can identify that animal or if we have a sick animal. And so we can we choose to brand them, okay? And so these calves will stay and they'll nurse until they're about six to eight months old. And then that's when we will wean them. And then they will go on to the next phase of production. So a stalker or backgrounding operation is when those weaned calves go on to the next stage. And so this can be mostly those calves going and eating more grass. So they're grazing out in the pastures that we know of. And sometimes we can put them in crop residue. So where we had other crops and then we can be more efficient with that land. So that's pretty neat. So they are stalker and backgrounding operations. And then they go to the next phase. And so, do we know where calves go when they're sold or how we sell calves? Cattle are typically sold at livestock marketing or livestock barns. And so, those animals, maybe sometimes at weaning or after they've gone through the stalker backgrounding phase, and then sometimes even breeding animals or cull animals will go and they will be sold at livestock options or livestock barn. And then Kayla's gonna talk about where they go after they're sold. So do you guys know where the cattle go after they're sold at the sale barns? So they go to a feed yard and I, my family has a feed yard and we feed out cattle and fatten them out to send them to slaughter. Now, did you know there is over 14 million cattle on feed right now in the US? That's a lot of animals, isn't it? How big do you guys think they are when, you set, when they go to that slaughter plant? Generally, they weigh between 1,000 and 1,400 pounds. That's quite big, isn't it? Wow. And these cattle are either fed on grass or they can be fed with grain. So like corn and maybe some 
soybean byproducts or something of that sort, and earlage and silage. But they can also be finished out on grass like you guys have out here. So where do they go after the feed yard? They go to the packing plant. And here they are harvested and they're cut up into things that we call primals. So there are nine primals that they get split up into. And they are graded. And for quality and yield grades, do you guys know what some of the quality grades are? So you can have prime, which is your highest quality grade. And then it's choice and then select. How old do you guys think they are when they go to the slaughter? 14. 14 years? 14 years? Or 14 months? Years. No, not that old. They're generally 18 to 22 months of old, so they're like a year and a half to two years old when they go to the slaughter plant. But the grass-fed cattle actually take longer to be able to get to the weight that we need them to. So they're a little bit younger if they go to the feedlot and they're grain-fed and they're a little bit older in order to get them to where they need to be when they're grass-fed. What comes next? That is your guys' grocery stores and restaurants. Like I told you guys before, they have the primals and then they cut down into smaller subprimals and smaller cuts of beef that you can go and find in your grocery store or that you might pick up at a small local butcher shop where you guys got your own animal done at. Do you guys know where any of the parts of the animal are at? Where you get like your rib or your roast from? Up along the back, right about in the center, you'll have your loin. And then below them are your ribs. And your sirloin's actually behind your loin. And then you have the round. It comes from their hind end. And then you have their chuck, which is that neck piece. And then their brisket, a plate, and then their flank on the back side of their stomach. And then the shanks, which come from the upper portion of their legs. And so what are y'all's favorite beef products to eat? So Kayla showed a picture. What is that? Does anyone know what that is? Beef. It's beef, <laughs> very good. Is it a hamburger or is it a steak? Steak. steak. It's mm -hmm. a steak, and who loves steak? I love steak. I do too. Who likes hamburgers? I like hamburgers too. Mm -hmm. And what about beef jerky and beef sticks? Those are a favorite also. Well, you all did a wonderful job. And so now that we know about the different phases or stages of the life cycle of beef, we're now gonna go outside where you're gonna get to see real cattle. Raise your hand if you're ready to go outside. Well, thanks for showing us your cattle, Mackenzie. Can you tell us a little bit about who we have here today? Um, well, the mama cow's name is Rose and the calf's name is Red. Uh, Red is a bull calf and he's mixed with a Hereford and Red Angus, I think. He's a Hereford Red Angus cross bull calf. Yeah. And you're going to um, show him in 4-H? Yeah, I'm going to show him for my next year's steer. I Wonderful. Think. Did you show Rose when she was a, a calf? Um, she was more of a heifer when I showed her. She was a heifer? And yeah. then, so you showed her, and then y'all bred her? Yeah. And then you showed her as a bred? Mm-hmm. And then we uh, halter trained her last year's calf pedal, too. And so you showed pedal as well? Mm-hmm. So what do you like so much about raising cattle? Um, probably because they can help with the environment and they're tasty. That's right. So we do have so many forages that cattle can upcycle. So mm -hmm. we can't get the same nutrients in the same way if we were to go eat grass. And it's not as tasty to us, but we're very thankful and grateful that cattle mm -hmm. can go graze and make that into a nutritious product, right? Yeah. That's wonderful. So do you want to continue showing cattle and raising cattle? Oh uh, yeah, definitely. It's really fun. So what kind of byproducts can cattle produce? Um, I know they can make glue with their, we can make glue with their hooves. Um, we can make jackets with their hides and gloves and can make brushes with their hair. So we can have medicines that actually are made from cattle byproducts. 
Yeah. Did y'all know that there is actually a protein that we can get from cattle that they put in fire extinguisher to put out fires? Did you know that? That's really neat, isn't it? Mm -hmm. There's so many different things that we can make from cattle byproducts and not just the beef that we eat. So we're very efficient and we try to use everything that we possibly can from the animals. In medicine, they use the cow valve and heart surgeries for valve replacement. It's pretty neat, isn't it? Yeah. So who here likes marshmallows? Did you know that marshmallows come from cattle byproducts? So every time you eat a s'mores at a campfire, just remember that came from byproducts from cattle. That's pretty neat and they're really tasty. Well, thanks for having us out on your ranch, oh, yeah. Kenzie. No problem. We enjoyed being able to learn about beef cattle today and being able to see some beef cattle in your calves. And so did everybody have a good time today and learn something new about beef cattle? Mm -hmm. That's great. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for coming today. Hope you guys had fun. <laughs>